Hello and welcome to the video on our review for exponential and logarithmic functions. This is Mr. Bean and we're going to be covering quickly the things that we learned in this unit which is first of all exponential growth and then exponential decay and the number e, ooh that fun number e, and then we'll talk about our logarithms and how logarithms work along with the properties of logarithms and then quickly how to solve uh, the exponential and logarithmic equations. Now there's been some confusion this year about what these review videos are, so let me just real quickly explain to you what the video is not. And, oh, by the way, do you like my Comic Sans? I know Mr. Sullivan loves Comic Sans. This is a shout out for Mr. Sullivan because he loves this font. So video is not, this video is not a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the review, okay? Don't think that you're going to get your review out and just go step-by-step -step and I'm going to show you how to do all the problems. That's not right. You actually have to think through the review yourself. And I am not going to reteach every single thing from the entire unit. This is just to get your, uh, what, do, what do we say, like maybe your feet wet a little bit into the things that we did, re refresh yourself and remind you. All right, so let's get into this. First of all, this is an exponential equation, and remember it's when you have the variable up here in the exponent. This here is called the, oh, that's not going to work. Let me switch pins. So this is the initial amount, if I can learn how to write correctly, initial, holy cow, this is horrible, initial amount, uh, when, and this here would be either the growth or the decay factor, depending on if it is growing or shrinking. And do you remember how you can tell the difference? It's growth when, it's growth when the base is greater than one. And if the, it's decay, if the base is in between, zero and one. Okay, that's how you know if it's growth or decay. And, uh, okay, good enough. Let's keep going here. Now, is it exponential or not? So we know if it's exponential because it is in the exponent. X in the exponent, remember, if it's not X in the exponent, it's exponential, and that's not possible. So here we have an X that's in the base, therefore this one's not exponential, and we'd say, no, it's not, and I don't need to do that part. But this one's exponential, the A, the initial amount would be negative 3, and it is growth because it's above the number 1, and the base is 2.6. All right, simple stuff. How do we graph these things? If you remember, we actually want to concentrate on just this piece right here. That's what we're going to concentrate on, and then afterwards, we will shift it right by one unit, and we will switch it, uh, shift it down by four units. That's what this minus one does. We're going to shift it right one, and a minus four shifts it down four. So let's figure out some coordinate points with where we were just focusing on the a, b raised to the x. So what I would do is I would create a quick little t-chart, and I'm just going to plug in a few numbers here, zero, one, and two, and if I plug in a zero, then I would get two times one, which is two. And if I plug in a 1 here, I'd get 2 times 3, which is 6. And if I plug in a 2 here, I'd get 3 squared, which is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Okay, so now let's shift those points. So my new coordinate points would be, I'll use a different color here, my new coordinate points would be if I'm shifting right 1 on all of them, it's now going to be 1, 2, and 3. And my y values go down by 4, so this is now negative 2, and this one is going to be a positive 2, and this one is going to be a positive 14. So let's plug those points in. 1, negative 2, there's that one, and 2, 2, and what else? 3, 14. Well, obviously that's way off the grid here, so I don't need to worry about that one. Uh, but we would have this minus 4 since the, it shifted down for 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote on the line y equals negative 4. That was really not a very straight line right there. Okay, there's my horizontal asymptote, and then you can use the horizontal asymptote and a couple of the points to connect what the graph should be doing. And again, I'm really not good at this when I'm using the electronic pad here to try and make this straight. Shouldn't be going straight up like mine. That looks horrible. All right, and domain. The domain's all the x values, and in this case, it's all real numbers. And the range is all of the y values that are above the asymptote. In this case, the asymptote is y is greater than negative 4. All right, there's how you graph those. Now, let's identify if it's growth or decay. We already talked about this, and you just got to look at the base. So the base here is larger than 1. So this one's growth. And the next one, the base here, it's less than 1. It's between 0 and 1, so it is decay. This one, the base is less than 1. Now remember, just because it's a fraction doesn't mean it's decay. It just is decay because it's between 0 and 1. So if you had a base here that was like 7 over 3, if that was the base, that's growth because that's larger than 1. 
Now, how to, let's graph one of these. We're going to graph a decay function. So we're going to do the same thing again, where we're focusing only on the a, b to the x, and I will then shift it right 1 again because of the minus 1, and then I will shift it up 3. So let's first figure out. Uh, some coordinate points. In this case, I'll do a 0, a 1. Now, I could do a 2 as well, but remember when it's a decay function, it's usually a little easier if we also used a negative 1 for our x value. Uh, you'll see why here in a second. So let's plug in a 0. If we plug a 0 in here, we get negative 2 times that whole thing becomes 1. So negative 2. And then I plug in a 1. I get negative 2 times a fourth. Negative 2 times a fourth. It's going to end up being negative one half. Okay, you might need to do that on the side if you're not sure about that. Negative two times a fourth. Now, how about negative one? If I plug a negative one into the x, that negative exponent will take the reciprocal of this thing. So this whole thing becomes a four. So it's negative two times four. That is negative eight. If I go over to negative one. All right. So now let's shift all of these points. Uh, let's get my new coordinate points and what I'm going to write down here. So I'm shifting right 1, so this becomes a 1, that becomes a 2, and the negative 1 will become a 0. I'm shifting all the y values up 3, so let's shift this up 3, that now becomes a positive 1. Negative 1 half, or negative 0.5 shifted up 3, will become 2.5. Again, use your calculator if you're not familiar with fractions and decimals, how to work with them. And negative 8 shifted up 3 will be at negative 5. So how about before I start graphing these, let's do the asymptote first. I think that's a little easier. One, two, three. I'm shifting up three, so there is my horizontal asymptote. And let's draw that. That helps us sketch the graph correctly. Switch my blue. One, one. There's one coordinate point. Two and 2.5. There's another coordinate point. And then zero, negative five. One, two, one, two, three. Four or five, if I can count, and there's some th three points and an asymptote, and that should be enough to help you sketch this graph. And it curves and it gets pretty steep here. And there's our graph, and again, horrible at drawing this straight. Okay, domain. It's going to be all real numbers again because it's the x, x values are go off to infinity to the left, off to the right, forever, and the range value is all of the y values that are underneath the asymptote, and the asymptote was a positive 3, so y is less than 3. All right, I think we're done with the exponential stuff. Uh, oh, nope, almost. We've got to talk about percent increase, percent decrease. Remember that the percent increase or percent decrease is how far away the base is from the number 1. So if the base was 1, then there is no increase or decrease. So how far away is it from the number 1? Well, look at this number 3. How far away is 3 from 1? It is 2. Okay, so then we take 2 and we convert it to a percent, which is 200%. And since that's above the number 1, it's a 200% increase. All right, this one. How far away is 0.925 from the number 1? Well, let's take 1 and subtract 0 0.925. And that would give us 0, 0, uh, what is this? 0.75. And then, therefore, move the decimal twice, and we'd have a 7.5%. And what is this? Increase, decrease? It's below the number 1, so this thing's getting smaller, so it is a decrease. 7.5% decrease. Now we'll do some fun compounding interest. When we are compounding interest periodically, when we're doing it just once in a while, we use this crazy formula, where n is the number of times compounded per year. R is the interest rate. P is the principal, the starting amount. But if it's compounded continuously, and that's the key word you need to watch for, if the problem says something about continuously, then you need to know that we're talking about pert. Okay, let's feel that in. Pert, that is continuously. Uh, and e is our natural number. So just a quick reminder on that. Uh, you want to know how these formulas and make sure you plug them in. R again to the interest rate. If it says uh, that the interest rate is 3%, then you would say that R is equal to 0 0.03. Don't use, uh, don't use 1.03 or don't use the number 3. Just be careful about the interest rate. Next, we have the definition of a logarithm. So when we have y equals log base b to the x, this happens if you can change this around. It only happens if b raised to the y is equal to 
x. Okay, so if the base is raised to the other side, it would equal x. Okay, that's, so hopefully you remember that, because we're going to go in between logarithmic form and exponential form on the next problem. So let's rewrite it. Exponential form, you take the base 3, you raise it to the other side, and that's going to equal 243. Simple, that's exponential form. Take the base 5, raise it to the other side, which is 3, and that will equal 125. Now let's go the other way. So if we have exponential form, 3 squared is 9, yes, let's write it as a logarithm. So it's logarithm base. Now the bases are always the same here, the base of the exponent, and it's going to become the base of the logarithm. So log base 3 of the other side, which is 9, that would equal 2. So for this one, log base 2 of the other side, which is 32, that will equal 5. Okay, that's writing in between exponential and logarithmic form. What about graphing them? So when you graph these, you really want to focus on a few things, and that is that it's always going to go, well, hold on, wait, remember how we do this? We do this with exponential um, graphs too. I want to focus on this right here, log base 3 of x. We'll do this plus 2 minus 1 thing in a minute here. The plus 2 just means that we're going to go left 2 units, and the minus 1 means that we're going to go down one unit. That's what these two things mean, the plus 2, because it's inside with the logarithm. But uh, all logarithms are going to go through that initial point 1, 0 before it's translated. It will always go through 1, 0. Okay, in fact, I'm going to put just kind of lightly these things in red, and then over here I'll shift to them in blue. So now what else would we have? It will go through the point log base 3 of 3. If I plug a 3 into the x here, log base 3 of 3, that just equals 1. Okay, think about that. Log base 3 of 3, that whole thing equals 1. Well, what if I did log base 3 of 3 squared? That whole thing would equal 2. So if I plugged in a 9, 3 squared, then it would equal 2. All right, so let's go 3, 1, put a dot, and then 9, 2 is way off the board here, so it's going to be way off here to the right. Uh, so I won't be able to put that one. Okay, now let's shift it. So now I'm going to go to uh, my blue, and we're going to shift it left 2. So the 1 becomes a negative 1, and I'm going to shift it down 1, and the 0 becomes also a negative 1. So we'll go negative 1, negative 1, dot. And then the 3 goes left 2, so that becomes a 1. And the 1 goes down 1, so that becomes a 0. So 1, 0. Hey, hey look at that. It's on the same spot. And then the 9, 2, the 9 becomes a 7. And the 2 becomes a 1. So negative 1, 1, and then 7. I could go off the board here a little bit. 5, 6, 7, then up 1 with my blue. And also, don't forget, we're going to do the asymptote. Okay, so the red, actually, I could probably just get rid of the red. The red, was I was going to try and shift a little bit, but it's not going to show up very well. So uh, let's draw our asymptote. We shifted left 2, so I should have a vertical asymptote now, straight up and down there. And connect. Logarithm graph, here we go, and it turns and going off like that. Man, that was nice. I'm proud of myself on this one. There's our logarithm graph, and the domain is now not all real numbers because we have this vertical asymptote that stops it. So it's all of the x values that are larger than this asymptote. The asymptote is negative 2. And the range, what's the range? Everything. The y values are up and down forever and ever. There's graphs of logarithms. Now we'll go to the properties, and that is expanding. I tried to throw one out here that uh, a lot of students will mess up on this, and so uh, here's how we expand this. We'll go log base 5 of p, and then we subtract log uh, base 5 of q squared. Now this is where it gets a little tricky, because this is multiplication, so you'd think addition, right? But what you have to do is you're subtracting everything that is on the bottom. So log base 5 of r cubed. And so it's actually this negative here will distribute and goes to both these logarithm terms. And so our final answer then would be log base 5 of p, when we're expanding it, minus the power comes to the front. Remember that power becomes an, uh, like a coefficient. Log base 5 of q minus, it's minus here, not plus, because both of these were in the denominator. We're going to subtract them both, or in other words, the negative distributes to both. 
And then we have log base 5. Oh, wait, I forgot the 3. The 3 goes in front here. Let's squeeze that 3 in. 3 in front, log base 5 of R. There's our expanded. So when you expand, don't forget to bring those exponents to the front, which I almost forgot right here with the 3. Now let's go the other way, condensing. So the 2 will distribute to both of these things and basically just becomes an exponent. So let's go ahead and just bring that up into the exponent. Uh, and that is going to be log base 4 of 6 squared. Well, that's just 36. Minus log base 4 of 3 squared, and that's just 9. Plus log base 4 of 25 to the 1 half. Well, what's 25 to the 1 half? That's actually the square root of 25. Uh, let's do the next one. This now becomes log base 4 of 36 over 9, 36 ninths, plus log base 4 of, square root of 25 is 5. We're almost done. So this is log base 4 of 36 over 9 is 4, so this becomes a 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Log base 4 of 20. Good. Done. Now, what about this thing? What if we don't know what it equals and we're trying to? Well, you take a calculator and you're going to change this. So you can say either log 5, use change of base, base log 5 over log 2. That's one way of pl plugging it into a calculator. Or you could also do natural log 5 divided by natural log 2. You can plug that into a calculator and you just get your approximate decimal answer. So remember, change of base. Change it to log 5 over log 2 or natural log 5 over natural log 2. Now we're almost done. We're going to solve one, two, three more problems, and then that's it. So where'd it go? Solve by equating exponents. So we need the bases to be the same in order to say that the exponents can be equated. So let's change this 1 16th. Let's make this a base 4. How could we make 1 16th a base 4? Oh boy, that's a hard one. 1 16th. Well, I know it's going to have to be negative because that will flip it. Let's see. If I did 4 squared, I'd get 16. So 4 to the negative 2, right? That will flip it and then make it 4 squared. Yeah, that's it. So 4 to the negative 2 raised to the negative 3m plus 1. And then that will equal 4 raised to the... What is this? Third power? 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 more is 64. Yep, four, not to the fourth power, whoops. It's supposed to be third power. There we go. 4 to third power. Now you can take exponents and set them equal to each other. Just remember that this thing, power to a power, will multiply. So you have a positive 6m minus 2 equals 3. And then you just solve from there. Add 2 and divide by 6. m equals 5 sixths. That's e getting the bases to be the same and then you equate exponents. Taking a logarithm of both sides. When we take logarithms, remember when we do this stuff, you want to, uh, this is 5 times here, we need to get the base isolated. The base and then its exponent. Once that's isolated, then you can uh, take a logarithm. So the first step is going to be to subtract 7, subtract 7, and ooh, let's change this. I know. I'm being a little bit dumb here, but I like to keep my colors different. Subtract 7, subtract 7. We get uh, 5 times 14 raised to the 9n plus 8 equals 80. And then divide both sides by 5, and you get 14 raised to the 9n plus 8 equals... Uh-oh, what's 80 divided by 5? Adriano, what's 80 divided by 5? Okay, 16, thank you. 16, and then, um, uh, what next? Oh, yeah, logarithm. So we're going to get rid, pull this thing out of the, we're going to pull that thing out of the exponent. That means we need to take a logarithm. We're going to do log base 14 of both sides. Log base 14 of both sides. I'm doing that to both sides, and when that happens, then this stuff all cancels, and you just have 9n plus 8 equals log base 14 of 16. Watch this. I'm going to use change of base. Log 14. See? Log base 14 of 16. I can use change of base. Log 16 divided by log 14. This is just, this whole thing right there is just some number. Okay? It's just some weird, crazy number. That's all it is. And so, uh, just some number. And then whatever that is, you're going to subtract 8 from it, and then divide by 9, and you're done. 
Okay, it's not too bad. You just got to go step by step. Last one, and then you'll be ready to complete your review and take that test. Remember, I need really good grades on this because I, Mr. Brust has given me such a hard time this year because I didn't make videos to the very end, and uh, they, they're giving me a hard time. I'm trying to let them see that this is hard material, but you guys are going to rock on this test, okay? I need you to really, really do well. Help, help me save face. Okay, so now we're going to logarithm isolate. That's what we want to get by itself now. So for me, I will add 5. And, oops. And then I get negative 7 log base 3 of n minus 10. And that will equal negative 7. Then divide both sides by negative 7. We get log base 3 of n minus 10 equals 1 because I divided by negative 7. Don't add 7 here. Be careful. This is multiplication right there. That's multiply. You need to divide by negative 7 to get rid of the negative 7. And then the next step is what's called exponentiate. Remember, I love that phrase, exponentiate. And you're going to take both sides and throw them up into an exponent. So I'm going to say 3 raised to the log base 3 of n minus 10. And then over on the right side, 3 raised to the 1. And then we have our answer of that whole thing cancels. You get n minus 10 equals 3 to the first power is just 3. Add 10 to both sides, n equals 13. Oh, that was nice and pretty. Okay, there we go. Hey, we're done. Good luck on that mastery check. Or not mastery check, this time it's test. Good luck on that test. And uh, I'm going to see you back in Unit 11 for Khan